I like to think that understanding the behavior of animals is interesting in its own right, particularly animals that echo so many characteristics that we think of as human. And so I think understanding how that works gives us some insight into being human. I'm Tim Wright. I'm an associate professor in the biology department here at NMSU, and I study behavior and evolution in birds. So I study vocal learning, which is an interesting behavioral phenomenon that we humans tend to take for granted because we rely on it so heavily for acquiring our own spoken language. So we use vocal learning early in life when we first acquire language, and many of us use it later in life when we maybe learn a second language. And so I've always been interested in this phenomenon because it's relatively rare. It shows up in humans, but not our closest relatives, the, the non-human primates. It shows up in other mammals, like bats and cetaceans and elephants, and none of these are each other's closest relatives. So that's an interesting evolutionary pattern that's repeated in the birds, where songbirds and hummingbirds and parrots all learn vocalizations, but none are each other's closest relatives. I have mostly worked on parrots, which are one of the groups of birds that are capable of vocal learning. And when I started in graduate school, uh, I was sort of casting around for questions and talking to my graduate mentor, and he said, well, you know, the parrots are a really interesting group because we know if you have one as a pet, it, it will produce sounds not like a parrot, but it'll mimic humans. Yet we know very little about what they're doing in the wild. And so that represented a, a big opportunity, and it's one that's kept me engaged now for uh, over 20 years. I have certainly always been fascinated by the natural world and, and birds from an early age. While most of my career is focused on parrots, recently I've also become interested in hummingbirds, and these are just fascinating animals. They also learn their vocalizations, but unlike parrots, which are long-lived and form tightly monogamous bonds, these hummingbirds are sort of on the opposite end of the scale. They live fast, breed as much as possible, and die young. And what this particular species of hummingbird does is that males will display in very small territories in a conglomeration that we call a lek. And this lek can be likened to sort of a disco where males are displaying and hoping that females will come by and, and uh, be attracted to them and select them for a mate. For my Manassa Award, I've proposed to continue work that I started in collaboration with Wei Tong in uh, electrical engineering. We've been trying to develop a smart feeder for hummingbirds, one that would use RFID or pit tag technology. And when they approach this feeder, it would read their identity, and then it would either open and allow them to feed, or it might not allow them to feed. And we can use these smart feeders to set up cognitive tests where we have a whole array of feeders, and so we can count the number of times it goes to the wrong feeder versus how often it goes directly to the right feeder. We're interested in whether females may be selecting males for their cognitive abilities. And so by partnering with Wei Tong and uh, also with Jay Misra in computer science, I'm hoping to develop both the smart feeders and then also we, we have some plans to develop other technological gizmos like little wireless microphones that we can put on birds. So one thing that I enjoy about my job and I think that is also very important for us scientists to do is communicating our work not just to other scientists, to specialized audiences, but to the general public. Perhaps the most exciting thing uh, that I've done for the general public is recently was to participate in a, a NOVA PBS documentary on parrots. They came down to Costa Rica and uh, recorded for several days uh, the wild parrots that I've studied there, and, and I was interviewed on that. So that was a very exciting experience to be able to, to talk about my work to a, a very broad audience, even an international one. Students are an absolutely essential part of what I do, and, and research doesn't happen without student involvement. It, as I mentioned before, the collaboration that I talked about with other colleagues extends down to a collaboration with students. There, it's more of a mentoring relationship where you're training students in what you might term the art of becoming a scientist. And since we have such an interesting and diverse undergraduate population, when we provide these opportunities to our undergraduates, it benefits everybody because they go out and introduce the rest of the world to the diversity we have here at NMSU. And I would have to say it's the wonderful interactions I have both with, with the students here and with my colleagues that keeps me here at NMSU. 
My home department of biology is a terrific place to, to work. We've got lots of dedicated people working towards the same end, and so that's, that's been very good to be part of that enterprise. I love living here in Las Cruces. It's a, it's a beautiful town, a be set in a beautiful setting, and uh, it's been a great place to raise a family, so I anticipate being here for a while. Tim Wright, Department of Biology, College of Arts and Sciences.